What's going on y'all, my name is Tyler. Thanks for checking out this video. So in this video, we're talking about soft light and specifically a few different ways of achieving soft light using different modifiers. Now, the reason why I'm talking about soft light, it's a really popular topic here on YouTube and the kind of the filmmaking space of YouTube. It's because it's generally as a rule of thumb for interviews, which is a, a bread and butter for a lot of filmmakers out there. It's the preferred method of lighting talent because it's more flattering on skin tones and it's just, it looks a little less jarring than hard light. Not to say hard light doesn't have its place, uh, but we're not gonna go into that in this video. I really just wanna focus on a few different ways of achieving soft light. So what I did is I kind of just set up an experiment down in my living room and uh, set up the camera, kept the camera settings and all that stuff the same the entire time. And I used one light, which was the Aperture 120D Mark II. And then I just used five different modifiers, five different ways of uh, softening that light source just to kind of see what results I would get. So I would have that kind of uh, knowledge to you know, use when I go film different interviews depending on the look I wanna get. As for modifying the light, I use five different modifiers, five different ways of softening the light. I use the Aperture Light Dome Mini, it's bigger brother, the Aperture Light Dome, the, the Mark II versions of these, but that, wouldn't, that shouldn't really change the concept of what we're talking about here. And then I used a DIY bounce board that I made, I'll leave a link to that video. And then just recently I uh, built a little DIY like scrim gym frame. Uh, four by four and then I, uh, I bought a, a half stop grid cloth from Westcott and uh, put that on front to uh, to use that for diffusing the light and then the last method I used I actually combined the uh, bounce board and the scrim gym to create a book light which is another really popular way of uh, achieving soft light so uh, basically like I said I went down in the living room and uh, this first shot here is just a baseline shot that's all it is is just kind of give you an idea of what the room looks like without any key light on and as you can see on the side of my face uh, on the window side there's just a little bit of light coming on to me but once I turn the key light on there's gonna be all that's pretty much gone and on the other side of my face there's just a little bit of a kicker light coming in but that's just from uh, the window in my kitchen uh, coming onto the side of my face, but uh, it's not really doing much, just maybe a tiny little kicker light. Uh, and I didn't control the light or the environment, so I didn't flag into the windows or anything like that, so that's kind of what I'm dealing with. But um, yeah, all that's the same. And then in the back, I just had this little practical that I turned on just to add a little bit more interest to the scene. And I used a little YC onion light, it's kind of a cool little like LED, small LED RGB light. And I adjusted, I think I put it at like 4,500K. Uh, 4500 Kelvin just to add a little bit more character to the scene. So that's the baseline. That's kind of the baseline shot um, But yeah, so moving on to the first one is the aperture light dome mini now I have this set at 57% and this is without the honeycomb grid or the grid on it Whatever you want to call it the egg crate grid uh, and you can see uh, it's creating a nice soft light source on me um, It's really pleasing. I definitely wouldn't hesitate to use this uh, in, in an interview It's great especially for travel all that kind of stuff um, but you can see there's a little bit of light spilling onto the background. So for this next shot, you can see I put the grid on and what I had to do is I had to uh, up the intensity just a little bit on the, uh, on the 120 D Mark II just to keep skin tones uh, relatively at the same IRE level. And I forgot to mention that in the beginning, I did change the 120D Mark II uh, intensity, just depending on the modifier, uh, just to keep skin tones at the same IRE level. Anyways, moving on to the Light Dome Mini with the grid, you can see when I put that grid on, it really focuses that light uh, just onto me and it really cuts that light from spilling onto the background. So depending on the situation, if you wanna focus that light or not, you have that option with the softbox. So moving on to the bigger brother of the Light Dome Mini is the Aperture Light Dome, and this is the Mark II version. And as you can see, the, the light is a little bit softer on my face. The shadows aren't quite as harsh, um, but as you can see, this is with the grid off and you can see there's definitely some light spilling onto the background. But when I put the grid on, you can see it, again, it focuses that beam uh, straight onto the face. And I, I wanna mention that for all these, I didn't change the white balance of the camera at all, because I wanted to show the differences of these different light sources of how they can affect the white balance and the tint just a little bit uh, on the overall scene. So if you compare side to side, the Aperture Light Dome and the Light Dome Mini, you can see the Light Dome does offer a, a softer light source and that's just because it's a bigger light source and that's going to offer a little bit softer of a light but they both provide a nice catch light in the eye and overall soft light and i wouldn't hesitate to use either of these uh, for an interview in fact i use the light dome all the time for interviews and like what i'm filming right now definitely using the light dome because it just it looks awesome so up next is the bounce board and this one definitely looks uh, a little bit harder of a light source and there's 
two things going on, the reason being. Uh, number one, uh, I had to keep the 120D Mark II. I put the Fresnel lens on it and I probably should have just used the, the the reflector that came with it instead of instead of the light dome because that could have covered up more surface area of the balance board which would probably have offered a bigger light source which is which would have made it a softer light source but um lesson learned there but as you can see it's a little bit harder to light source and also the the surface of the balance board is a little bit reflective because again this isn't this wasn't made for filmmaking this was made for insulation so i think there's just a protective layer uh, on the bounce board. So that's also uh, creating a little bit harder of a light source, but uh, but it's still an, uh, comparative to an actual hard light source, single light source, it is softening the light a little bit. And in my other video, you can see, um, I'll leave, leave a link uh, above. It definitely diffuses or softens the light up uh, quite a bit when you uh, cover the entire surface area of the bounce board. So lesson learned there, but um, nonetheless, I'm glad I did this experiment for that. And then the next up is the four x four frame with the half stop grid cloth. And uh, what I did is I angled it uh, at 45 degrees, just like I did with the soft boxes. And you can see, uh, again, nice, really soft light source. And uh, with this, there's no diffusion or anything going on before that. It's just this diffusion, but because it's such a, a large light source, it is really soft. So in the light dome and the light dome mini, there's actually a, another layer of diffusion on the light dome mini. There's a little reflector that bounces the light first and then spreads it out. And then on the light dome, uh, the bigger one, it has a, another little piece of diffusion on the inside that diffuses the light first and then hits the soft box. But because the light source is actually bigger with this four x four frame, it still looks really soft because of how big the light source is. And the last setup is the book light setup. And I, that's basically combining the bounce board and the four x four scrim gym together to create a book light. And what's happening is I'm basically shining the uh, 120D Mark II into the bounce board. And then that basically becomes a light source. And then that's bouncing the light into the scrim gym to diffuse the light once again. So basically two layers of diffusion, two layers of uh, softening the light. And what that's doing is creating a really soft fall off from the key side of my face to the shadow side of my face. So as you can see, all these different techniques create different looks and have different results. Uh, and it just depends on the look you're going for and the budget you have and the time you have to set up and all that kind of stuff. Obviously book lighting is gonna yield typically the softer light source, but there's more uh, equipment needed, there's more setup time involved and all that kind of stuff. So if you have the time and the budget and all that for different stands and stuff, then you, you know, and you want really as soft light as you can get, that's a really great option to use. But if you're, you know, really quick setup and all that kind of stuff, the Aperture Light Dome and the Soft Light, like those are just great because they're so quick to set up and they obviously provide very soft light. So it just really depends on your budget, your timing, all that kind of stuff, and the look that you want to achieve. You know, because book lighting is so soft, you may not want that soft of a light source all the time, and it's harder to control the light spill and all that kind of stuff, as you can see in the examples. So um, yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed that. Here's kind of a, sh a comparison of all of them in the same frame, so you can kind of get an idea of how all that looks. So I hope you found that helpful, informative, or anything like that. If you did, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't have any reason to leave a comment yet, but still wanna leave a comment, either say hi or uh, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you could learn any instrument in the world, what would it be and why? As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a fantastic day, evening, or whatever time of the day you're watching this, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.